Hello everybody. So today I have a piece of interesting news to share with you regarding Starship. SpaceX has submitted new filings to the FCC for Starlink communications during the Starship orbital test flight. They intend to mount Starlink satellite terminals on both Super Heavy and Starship for the first test flight and use these terminals to communicate with SpaceX's satellite constellation. The reason for this, apart from providing us with some spectacular views of both vehicle halves, is that SpaceX wants to demonstrate high data rate communications with a new spacecraft, not only during launch and in-flight operations, but also during booster recovery and spacecraft re-entry. Yes, you heard that right, booster recovery. But more on that in a second. Additionally, SpaceX believes that the Starlink satellite constellation can provide unprecedented volumes of telemetry and enable communications during atmospheric entry. Now, if this bit turns out to be true and SpaceX manages to maintain telemetry up during re-entry, then I believe this will be a game changer for the industry because there's always been the issue of spacecraft experiencing telemetry blackouts during atmospheric re-entry due to the tremendous heating experience in that phase. Hence, there is always this short period of uncertainty where you don't know what's happening with the object in question and SpaceX being able to basically do away with this problem would be a welcomed change indeed. Now, this is fantastic news, but the actual elephant in the room and what got the most people talking about it on social media is the fact that SpaceX just casually said they might attempt to perform a booster catch on this first orbital test flight. And they even submitted a flight profile for said maneuver, whereby it would perform a fairly massive boost back burn and fly directly back to Starbase. No re-entry burn, just boost back burn and then landing burn to hopefully manage to gently hover between the chopsticks. And I don't know if you've been following the chopstick tests uh, these past couple days, but I don't see them moving that fast, or rather opening and closing that fast. I mean, I imagine that the chopsticks will need to be opened like this and not like this, and then the booster just comes right in between, and then they just close the remaining bit. I'm kind of uh, worried, you know. Uh, I don't want to see. <laughs> I don't want to see fireworks at Star Race uh, so early at least. I'm curious to know what you think, uh, whether you think this is a uh, good decision to maybe perform a catch attempt uh, in the first orbital flight or, or whether you think that this could be a reckless idea. I mean, trying to catch a 70 meter tall behemoth of a rocket mid-air with a pair of mechanical arms could be considered the epitome of recklessness anyway. Although I think once they manage to pull it off confidently on a regular basis, I think it will become the new normal, the same way it happened with the Falcon 9 booster landings. Anyway, I feel like almost everybody expected to see at least one orbital test flight where both booster and ship were safely thrown into the ocean before attempting a tower catch, and so it was kind of unexpected to see them mentioning a possible catch attempt in the first ever flight. Uh, we'll see what happens. The launch profile for the ship shows us that uh, it will proceed as intended, targeting a maximal altitude of around 250 kilometers before atmospheric entry happens. And if it survives these extreme conditions, Starship will try to pull off its now famous trademark bottle flip move and uh, plunge gently into the Pacific Ocean north of Hawaii. So uh, let me know in the comments down below in which direction you think this could go. Either a water plunge in the Gulf of Mexico or a catch attempt with the orbital launch tower. And there is actually a big difference between an attempt and an actual successful catch. So uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Other than that, I will see you next week with the first images from the James Webb Space Telescope. So, um, hope to see you there. Have a nice day, whatever you are. Take care. Bye-bye.